The samurai are an extremely iconic symbol of feudal Japan, with their beetle-esque armor and cool faceplates. And let's not forget katanas, history's most superior weapons, folded 1,000 times. What? Oh, they're actually uh, trashy junk swords made from scrap metal, and the, the whole uh, folded 1,000 times thing was because they'd usually break if a swift breeze blew their way, and uh, the only reason they're so iconic is just because they kind of look cool? Well, ain't that something. Anyways, while they're better known for their aesthetic than anything, there are some really cool samurai in history that need to be talked about. These are the top 10 most famous samurai warriors in history. Number 10. Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Born to the Minamoto clan, just as the Heian period was falling apart, Yoshitsune escaped the murder of his father and brothers during the Heiji Rebellion. He'd be placed in the care of monks at Kurama Temple, where he'd learn to use a sword and, more importantly, his mind. Leaving the temple, the stories of Yoshitsune drift between fact and fiction, some works of art depicting him defeating a bandit by the name of Kumasaka at the age of 15. What is held as truth is his friendship with Benkei, a warrior monk who was defeated by Yoshitsune in a friendly duel. The two would then join the Genpei War, Yoshitsune joining his brother Yoritomo, who had become head of the clan. After the war, his brother would become jealous of him, causing Yoshitsune to flee Kyoto until he was cornered and forced to fight Benkei. Supposedly, he was pressured into committing seppuku, though there is some debate on this as the Ainu, the Japanese long maligned indigenous peoples, hold a historical account of Yoshitsune escaping to Hokkaido. Number 9. Kunisoki Masahige Active in the Kamakura period, Kunisoki was known for his contributions to the Kenmu Restoration in 1333. While his origins are generally unclear, it's agreed upon that he was a member of the gentry before his rise to fame. His career was spent mostly in the service of Emperor Go-Daigo, in a war to overthrow the Kamakura Shogunate with the end goal of returning power to the rule of the Emperor. Despite Kunisoki's tactical brilliance, Go-Daigo was kind of stupid, and a tactical error during a crucial battle led to Kunisoki's demise. His famous last words were, Would that I had seven lives to give for my country. Fittingly, he currently has two wickedly cool statues, one in front of the temple Kashinji, and the other in front of the current Japanese Imperial Palace. Number 8. Kondo Isami a member of the Shinsen Gumi, Kondo Asami started life as a relatively well-known scholar and exceptional swordsman. He then rose to fame after a gang of thieves broke into his family home, which he supposedly defeated single-handedly. From there, he was trained as a swordsman, but wouldn't see action until the establishment of the Shinsen Gumi, where he was established as a teacher of swordsmanship and eventually made a full member. From there, he was embroiled in the conflict born from the dissolution of the Tokugawa Shogunate. And while the Shinsen Gumi were disbanded, at that point, he managed to retain a similar rank and title. From there, he was essentially forced on the back foot, and in 1868, Kondo was captured and executed under the pretense of having murdered Sakamoto Ryoma. Number 7. Sakamoto Ryoma Mastering the sword at a young age, Sakamoto worked as a teacher of Kenjutsu until the political situation in Japan took a turn for the worse. Sakamoto joined a number of anti-shogunate forces, and is credited with a number of assassination attempts, some of which did succeed, though he was known as someone who generally believed that the shogun should serve the people. He would later be assassinated by a group of attackers, who slaughtered Sakamoto and his friend Nakaoka Shintaro. The Shinsen Gumi was accused of the murder, leading to Kondo Asami's execution. A pro-shogun group called Miwari Gumi would confess to the murder three years later, but the true assassin was never found. Sakamoto's gained fame as something of a Clint Eastwood style character in modern fiction ever since. Number 6. Yasuke. While Japan was famed for its isolation, there were many ports in which trade did occur. One of these trades was the slave trade, where Nobunaga happened upon a man who would have been extremely peculiar to his eyes. Yasuke's exact origins are unknown, but as most of the slaves traded in the area were originally from Mozambique, it's generally a solid theory that he'd have come from there, specifically the people of Yao, though others claim that Sudan and Ethiopia could have served as his homeland just as well. Either way, Nobunaga was introduced to Yasuke, originally thinking that his skin must have been painted. 
Accompanying a missionary, Yasuke learned Japanese and eventually became a retainer of Nobunaga, becoming the warlord's weapon bearer. We'll get more into Nobunaga later, but Yasuke was known to have been with him at the end of the warlord's life. Beyond that, Yasuke's fate is unknown, as the traitor Akechi did not kill him for quoted reasons that are gross and kind of racist and I will not say because ew. Number 5. Hijikata Toshizo Back to the Shinsengumi. Hijikata joined the Shinsengumi alongside Kondo, where he rose his way to the title of Vice Commander. He was famed for rooting out corruption within his organization, and his dedication to the role was so great that he refused marriage on the pretense of how dangerous it would be for his wife. Keeping the group in line, they would join the Boshin War. During Kondo's capture, Hijikata would attempt to appeal Kondo's innocence, but was repeatedly denied. Fearing the collapse of the Tokugawa, Hijikata led one final raid to steal the warship Kotetsu, where the swordsmen were repelled by the ship's crew and a Gatling gun. Driven to Hakodate before the closing of the war, he instructed his page to dedicate a poem of his death. Though my body may decay on the island of Ezo, my spirit guards my lord in the east. He was later killed, shot while riding on horseback. The Shinsengumi surrendered and was disbanded. Number 4. Tomoe Gozen Another warrior active during the late Heian period, Tomoe was one of Japanese history's few women warriors. She served under Yoshinaka, leading 300 samurai to victory against 200 Taira warriors in 1182. Clashing with Yoritomo, they lost the battle, Yoshinaka sending Tomoe away while claiming that he'd be ashamed to die with a woman. Smooth. From there, accounts and details become muddy. Apparently she just went on a rampage, killing at least three major samurai before escaping. One story goes that she was captured and made to wed the soldier Wada Yoshimori, and after his death in 1213, she made her way to a temple and became a monk, living until 91. Other stories claim that she committed seppuku, and more more stories yet claim that she took her lord's head, walking into the sea with it to serve him in the afterlife. Any of these could be true, and personally I think the last one is really metal so that'd be my headcanon. Number 3. Toyotomi Hideyoshi We're getting into the big boys here. Originally beginning his career under Nobunaga, Hideyoshi would avenge his lord and assume authority. Constructing Osaka Castle, Hideyoshi would then engage in a series of campaigns against the Katsui and Iyasu clans, creating the clan of Toyotomi. From there, he would campaign in an attempt to unify Japan, conquering Nagoroji, Shikoku, Toyama, Kyushu, and Odawara which ended the Sengoku period. He'd also ban the peasantry from owning weapons to prevent revolts, creating a statue of Buddha from the melted remnants. He would then attempt to campaign against Korea with pretty poor results. One of his more famous acts was the perpetration of the 26 Martyrs, where 26 Christians were arrested and tortured, then crucified in Nagasaki. He'd try to war with Korea again and would achieve some victories, but it would ultimately fail. Hideyoshi passed away in 1598. This would mark the beginning of Tokugawa's prohibition of expansionist attempts until the 19th century. Number 2. Oda Nobunaga The biggest and baddest of the boys. Oda Nobunaga was born into power, but once his father passed, the clan began to dissolve into a succession crisis. He would wrangle power from his relatives, consolidating the clan not a moment too soon, as their longtime rival Imagawa was ready to invade, leading an army of roughly 2,000 men against 25,000. Nobunaga aggressively battled his rivals, gaining allies and territory through frankly genius strategic calls that led the small territory to sudden and crushing victories. He would then lead a campaign to unify Japan, a massive series of wars that began the Sengoku period. His exploits are far too many for just this one point, and in 1882 he would be betrayed by Akechi Mitsuhide, who would then take the life of Nobunaga's son and force Nobunaga to commit seppuku. Number 1. Miyamoto Musashi Swordsman, philosopher, writer, ronin. These and many more titles are attributed to the famed warrior Miyamoto Musashi, the wandering swordsman whose exploits are detailed in the self-published Book of the Five Rings. The legends and exploits of this man are legendary, from his first duel to his fight with Sasaki Kojiro, and once more, what is fact and what is fiction can be heavily debated. He was also famed for his peculiar style of combat, using one sword in each hand, a 
katana and a wakazashi, or sometimes a jute, a sword parrying tool. He claimed that his arms could move more naturally that way, but it also just could have been the rule of cool. Musashi's greatest achievement may have simply just been passing away peacefully in his 60s. His fame has long since lasted in media, most famous being the manga series Vagabond. Those are the samurai, and thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.